60-03-30. Blind Bartimaeus. Tell us, Oklahoma, you see, and may thy great Holy Spirit, Lord, come tonight in power and perform great miracles among us, healing the sick, holding, calling home to the shelter in a time of storm, those who are weary along the road. May those who have wandered off the beaten path come back tonight and be reconciled to God. Grant it, Lord, and when we live tonight, we pray that you will do something among us that will be so outstanding that will make us go to our homes seeing like those coming from Emmaus. Did not our hearts burn within us as he talked to us along the way? For we ask it in his name and for his sake. Amen. May be seated. Thank you, Brother Roy. We are these letters. We pray over them. We appreciate your confidence in our prayers. Some of them are stamped. Some that comes to the place I'm staying. I don't. They don't stamp. So we are putting them right back just as quick as you possibly can. Had a wonderful night last night. Did we not? The Holy Spirit blessed us. Now I see down in the orchestra pit here, people on the stretchers and cords. Now just make it in your mind now that this is the last night you are going to suffer. You are going to go home tonight to be well. You are going to just believe that in your heart. You will not be disappointed. Usually we receive what we expect to see. Just what we expect. If I come down in a, that little pit and take you people out of there and make you well, I'll do it. I'd just be so happy to do that. But I can't do it. I'm just a man like this man here. I wished I could, but I know that our Lord is here. And he's the one who can make you come off the stretchers and go home and be well. I trust that he will. Not only that, but all you out through the audience. Very nice seeing this nice audience tonight. Nice crowd of people. And our precious brother has already spoke the word. And I just want to take a few minutes now as each night. I do not try to preach at night just to kind of give a little drama till I get the feeling of the audience. I'm sure you understand what I mean. And then, if the Lord's willing, I want to preach Sunday afternoon on the subject as the eagle stareth her nest and her breath over her young. That is, if the Lord permits, Sunday afternoon. Now, tonight, just till we get kindly acquainted and all this is spiritual, I look at you as human beings like myself, but each one of you has a spirit. And then, when the anointing of the Holy Spirit comes, it's like a breath almost, and you can feel belief, unbelief, and what more. Now, you say that's psychology, Brother Branham. Maybe it is, if it is, our Lord used it, because he took a man outside the city one time to pray for him, and then another time, we know that there was a dead girl in the house, and the people were making a great lamentation over it, and he put the people out, and just left the parents, and Peter, James, and John, and himself, and he raised the, the get the girl from the dead, see, there's something about it. And each one you're looking, your eye is the gate to your soul. You can look at it. It almost governs the other senses. You look at it before you taste it. You look at it before you smell it and feel it and so forth. It's usually the eye is the gate to the soul. And when you're watching, and if you could only let that be a blessing to you, when you see with your own eyes, hear with your own ears, the Lord Jesus moving among the people and doing things that he can has been doing it should make you have a real faith then now you won't see him in a physical body until he comes for you at the great general resurrection and then we'll see him and then we'll know as we are known see him as he is that's the hour we're all longing waiting for that time until that time his spirit is here and the church is becoming more like him all the time from the great first reformation in luther church had a wide stretch that was still the holy spirit moving in the days of luther then he come into the minority again when john wesley sanctification the second work of grace he called it and then along come the pentecost the restoration of the gifts still narrowed down and it's narrowing on out now until the church and christ will become one when it does the coming of the lord will be and the resurrection of all of those that sleep in him shall rise lutheran methodist Baptist, Presbyterian, all that's got his spirit will rise to meet him in the air. God grant that that right away, even so come Lord Jesus. I was, it's on my mind, I must say it, I had a case of that here some time ago that I went into a city, we were holding a meeting, and I, somewhere in Ohio, I can't think of the place right now, 
and it was having a great meeting, so much that I went out into the country to stay in a little motel. There was a little drunkard restaurant just across the road. The nicest, cleanest looking little women walked in there and so Christian-like and had been fasting for about three days and the brethren went on to the service. I was to preach that Sunday afternoon. I wasn't going to have a healing service and I was kindly a little hungry so I thought I'll go over to the little restaurant but they'd closed up and gone to church. It was Sunday. And just the other side of the road, a filling station and a common little honorary American restaurant like there and a little sandwich shop. This is horrible to have to say this, but it's true. And when I walked in, there was a policeman standing about my age, surely married and had his arm around a woman playing a slot machine, gambling illegal in Ohio. And there he was gambling. I thought, well, the law. I looked back at the back and some of those boys, bit neck kind with them, long hair hanging on their neck and overall jackets and oh, and pulled down, you know, or clothes down on their hips were standing there with their arm around about a 16 year old waitress where they ought not have had it. I thought, oh mercy. And looked to my right, there was a man summertime with a big overcoat on, government overcoat, big gray scarf around his neck, another man sitting by him with an old woman old enough to be my grandmother and she had this manicure on her face. Ever what you call the stuff, the little black I see, that's wrong every time. What is it you call that? It's something and it's somehow, I tell you, it doesn't belong on Christians. That's one thing, sure. I'm a missionary. That's a Heathen treat. That's exactly right. Pentecostal people you used not to do it. But I don't know what happened when they used to not cut their hair. But I don't know what happened. Somebody let down the bus somewhere. We used to say a little song an old Methodist preacher used to sing. We let down the bars, we let down the bars, we compromise the sin, we let the down the bars, the ship got out. But how did the goats get in? The answer you let down the bars. Poor thing, blue looking hair, and was sitting there in little bitty short clothes on that a man would have been ashamed to have on and sitting there and she was drunk and I looked around and I thought, Oh mercy, I thought, God, how can you how can you, being holy and righteous, ever look upon such as that? Looks like you just smite the thing off. Does my little Sarah and Rebecca have to be raised up? Uh, such as that, the two men excused themselves and walked away. They would be back in a few moments, they said, and I was standing there looking at the woman, criticizing her with all that was in me and thinking, what a horrible thing. But many times we shouldn't do that. We don't know what's the inside story. And it happened to be God taught me a lesson right there. I, stepped, I just stepped back behind the door Something said, move back. And when I knelt down to pray, I looked and saw a vision of the world turning like this, looked like a crimson spray around it. And I seen myself, and it was fast, standing on the earth, and every time I would do something wrong, my sins would start up to God, but Jesus act as a bumper to keep me, my sins, from getting to God. And every time I would do something wrong, then look like that my sins would go towards God. And then Jesus would catch it, and I'd see the tears running off of his cheeks and blood down over his face. And he looked up and say, Father, he doesn't know what he's doing. Forgive him. And it like that. And I thought, is that my sins doing that? And I went up close to him. I looked, and there was a book laying open. And my sins were awful on it. And I said, Dear Lord Jesus, you mean that my sins is what hurt your sides? And he made tears in your eyes and blood in your face. He said, it is. I said, please forgive me. And he touched his side, wrote across the book, pardoned, threw it over behind him. I said, oh, I'll ever be grateful to you. And when he did, said, I forgive you. But he wanted to condemn her.
And when he did that, I was looking back at the woman again. I walked over where she was. I said, how do you do? She was drinking quite extensively. And I said, she looked up at me and she said, oh, how do you do? And I said, could I sit down? She said, I got company. I said, not like that. I just want to tell you something. And I sat down and told her. And I looked at her and she was crying. And I said, aren't you ashamed? She said, who are you? Are you this minister down here in the Amory? I said, yes, ma'am, Brother Branham. She said, I'm ashamed to face you, Brother Branham. She said, my father was a Methodist minister. I've got a two daughters. One of them is a real renowned Christian. The other is a Sunday school teacher. And she told me the story of a drunken husband. And what she started, she said, there's no hopes for me. I said, if there's no hopes for you, why did God show me that vision? And... There, I took her by the hand, knelt down there beside of that booth, and led her to the Lord Jesus right there in that room. When I got up, the policeman was standing there, and that girl was standing back there crying. I made a uh, difference, you see. We must look at things the way they are, see. Now, we don't know what's behind the story. Let us turn now to St. Luke, the 18th chapter, 38th verse. I'd like to read this just for a little talk before we pray and have it for the sick. And he cried, saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Our scene opens at the north gate of the city of Jericho, A.D. 33. It must have been a cold morning. He was late. He had been dreaming all night that he could see. And he got up late and made his way to his little station or post where he begged. And oh, in that day, there was many beggars. If they didn't get to the gates early, when the people were coming into the business in the city, why they had to catch the person, maybe they could afford one coin a day to be a beggar. But they'd all gone in, seemingly now, and there he was left alone. He couldn't hear no one on the road. He looked to he, I mean, looked to hear someone calling. No one was coming. So he goes over and gets him a rock and sat down, and he began to think of the night when he was dreaming. And then he remembered that warm Palestinian sun began to warm him up a little in his rugged coat, as he sat on that rock near the wall, just out of the shadow, and he had his wrinkled face turned towards the ground. And he might have been thinking something like this. His mind went back to many years on that same hillside or near Jericho as a little boy when he could see and how he used to love to run up and down the hill and pick little buttercups in early spring and lay down on the hillside and watch the white clouds go by and the blue skies reflecting. What a beautiful world it was. And now he was old and everything is gone and he's blind and begging for his living. How cruel it seemed like nature had been to him. And while he was thinking on that, he remembered of how that his mother used to call him from across the hill. Here along about two o'clock in the afternoon, call him in after he'd had his midday lunch. He would, she'd set out on the side porch that faced off towards the Jordan River and she would get him in her arms and she would stroke his little dark Jewish curls back and kiss him and say, Bartimaeus, you are the sweetest little boy in all the world. I'm so glad that you're my little boy and how he would look and see her pretty cheeks and the big brown eyes as they could smile to him as she would hug her little boy to her cheeks and kiss him and, and he used to love to hear her telling stories before she rocked him to sleep. One of his favorite stories was about a little boy. Once in the Bible time, she told him the story of a great mighty prophet that lived by the name of Elisha, that wore the mantle of Elijah with a double portion of his spirit, and how that his, this man was a great servant of God, how God honored his prayers and honored those who honored him, and he passed through a certain city, and there was a woman in this city that was a great woman, not a Hebrew, but she was a Shunammite. But she honored that man because he was a great man of God, and she believed in God, and how she would tell him of the courtesy. The great woman would have him stop in and eat with she and her husband. And one day she said to her husband, I perceive that this man that dines with us when he's coming through, going up to his cave in the mountain at Mount Carmel to pray, 
I perceive that he is a godly man, a holy man, a great man of God. I think we ought to do something for him. And they would say, I pray thee on the side of a house here, let us build him just a little house to himself, that uh, he feels embarrassed perhaps to come in and eat with us all the time. So let's just put him a little table out there and a little wash basin, a little candlestick and a bed, a chair that he can rest in and he can refresh himself as he comes by. And when the great prophet came by and found this, it just blessed his soul to see that she loved God well enough to honor his servant. So she, then the prophet said to his servant Gehazi, go ask her if I could speak to the chief captain or some favor I could do for her. And the servant came back and said, no. She said she dwells among her own people and she has need of nothing. Thank you, just the same. But Gehazi said, her husband is old and they have no children, so it must have been God gave the prophet a vision. Then when he said, call her to the door, and when she stood in the door, the aged pro old prophet raised up and said, Thus saith the Lord, according to the time of life, you'll bear a son. Yet the woman could not see how that could be possible, but in the time for appointed, she had a nice little boy, and how she loved this little boy. And I can hear her say, Bartimaeus, you know, little boys and girls are God's blessing to a family. It's something about it that ties the family together, you see. Bartimaeus, God gave that lonesome woman a little boy, and God gave you Bartimaeus to hubby and your daddy, and now you are our little treasure here at home. Oh, we love you so much. And he'd put his little arms around her neck and hug her. And there he was now wrinkled and old, and she'd been gone for years. Then she would tell the story how the little boy wanted to follow. His father said, just like you, Bartimaeus, go out into the field. And one day, must have been about noontime, high noon in Palestine, and the sun must have stroked him because he screamed, my head, my head. His father sent him home and he sat on his mother's lap until about noontime and he died. But God dealt with that woman how she took him and went over to that little place and laid him on the bed where the prophet had laid God's representative laying him on the bed. She saddled a mule and went to Mount Carmel. The prophet did not know what her trouble was. He sent Gehazi and said, go see what's wrong with the Shunammite. She's got sorrow in her heart and God has hid it from me. God don't tell his prophets everything. He just tells his servants what he wants them to know, nothing else, see? They can't make God tell them anything. God just says what he wishes to say. And then how that the servant taking the alleged staff to go lay on the baby, but the woman held on. She knew that God was in that prophet. And she said, I'll not leave you. She wanted to know why that God gave her the baby and then took it away. But you see, all things work together for good to them that love the Lord. She'd teach Bartimaeus those lessons. Then he would stop and say, how could it be to the good that I'm blind then? But mother no doubt was right. Then he went on with his dream. And after a bit, he began to think again. Now, you know, Elijah went into that room, walked back and forth, up and down in the floor, went and laid his body on the little dead baby. And the baby sneezed seven times and it came to life. Oh, how his little eyes would have brightened. Say, Mama, is that God still living? Oh, yes, dear, he lives right here in these hills of Judea. He stays right around his people. He never leaves them. That was ringing down in his heart. All night he'd dreamed of having his sight again. He thought, oh, how glorious it would be here. If I could see the autumn leaves are falling. If I could once more look around, blindness is a horrible thing. The whole world is shut off to you, the visible world. And there, sitting there, then he used to think of another great story. His mother was sitting on the porch, facing off to Jordan, and she'd say, Bartimaeus, just right down there, less than a half a mile, just below the ford, in the month of April, when all the snow has melted and the river was way up here in the valley, 
God led his people to the other side and then opened up the way and come across Jordan on dry land. And he would think of them stories. He'd say, oh, but alas, wonder what happened to that great prophet. Our priest tells us that the days of miracles is past. Those things can't happen no more. That's what's the trouble. Today, we have too much of that thing that God was but isn't now. The Bible said he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Just as much God today as he was then, and he always will be God. If he ever was God, he will always be God. He cannot die. He cannot get old. He cannot change his mind. He cannot make new decisions on things he's already made decisions on. His first decision was right and has to forever be right. Or he made the wrong decision when he made it. See, he has to ever keep with his first decision he's perfect infinite and cannot change oh that's a consolation that we must have anybody seeking god must have that firm consolation that god cannot change i can say something say i'm sorry i said it i might have been wrong but he can't say that because he's perfect he's infinite we are finite we can make any kind of mistake but he can't if he ever was called on the scene to heal a person and he healed that person according to their faith the next time he's called he's got to heal the next one and the next one and everyone that ever comes to him if he's called on the scene to save a person and he saves him upon his faith everyone that calls with faith he has to save that's right and remember when god gives you a call blessed are you when you feel god's calling cause no man can come to the me except my father calls him first it's god knocking at your heart's door what if he never did knock think of it what a horrible thing that would be but god gives everyone a chance you turn it down yourself while Bartimaeus was sitting there all at once he had the coming of a little mule's hoofs coming down the big cobblestones coming down from towards jerusalem oh he thinks this must be a rich man coming about the only way of travel then was by foot or by donkey and the rich people could ride a mule he might have said this must be a place i can get an arm so he throws back his arms running down towards the streets or towards the highway saying have mercy on me i'm a blind man i have slept this morning i haven't a coin my winter's wood is not in and there's no meal in the barrel would you please help me and the servant stops the little mule and he hears a gruff voice saying out of my way beggar i am a servant of the lord i'm a priest from jerusalem there's to be a fanatic so-called prophet in here today to have a healing service out of my way we're going to take the miss the missouri association down here and set that nothing like that happens in our city we don't want none of that down here we don't have such things as that down here you'll what out of my way beggar i must be on my way and the little mule moved on but Emmaus finds his way back now the sun had raised way up and the shadow of the wall had went back a little ways so he found him a rock near the gate filling around the old stones that where the walls had fell and he sat down on this stone and he thought where was i dreaming about my boyhood when i could see when i was a little boy i was thinking of a great jehovah god that once was oh surely god's servant wouldn't act like that what about what was that he said to me about a prophet oh i guess i didn't get it and on he sat down and thought well you remember years ago my mother has told me many times that right down that same road over those same stones come Elijah and Elisha, Aminam, going to open up the Jordan. Right over the same stones, not 20 yards from where he was sitting one day, two great prophets walked Aminam to the Jordan. Same road, same stones. Oh, if I could have lived then, I would have run out there and said, Great servants of the Lord God, just ask god god will hear your prayers my eyes will come open like that little boy standing here last night born blind my eyes will come open and i'll be able to see and i can work and make a living and so forth if but alas those prophets are gone they say there's no more prophets and there's 
nothing else left and Jehovah has forsaken us and there is no more days of miracles is past and he just expressed us to live for heaven above and then when we die we'll go up there and there's no help for us anymore and I believe if I would have went out there to Elisha and Elijah I would not have been treated by them servants of the Lord like I was by this one just passed by I believe they would have considered my case and at least offered a word of prayer for me as they passed by. You know, as a servant of God, you ought to watch what you are doing because you are writing, written as pistols, read of all men. You Christians always be willing to lend a hand or to do something to help somebody make life a little more pleasant for them as they are. You say, well, I don't have any gift of healing. You don't have to have at least offer something, offer a prayer, do something, make them feel do the best you can by them. Anyhow, never turn a shoulder, a cold shoulder to anyone, no matter who, what it is, even if they've mistreated you, do it anyhow. If you can't do it from your heart, then you have to come to the altar and stay till that spirit comes in you, that from your heart you can love those who doesn't love you. That's when God will answer your prayer. For as long as there's anything in your heart, if I conceive iniquity in my heart, then God will not hear me. That's what David said, and that's true. He won't hear you. Then Elijah had passed by there, and Elisha going down, but the poor blind man had been taught that the days of miracles were past. And then he remembered that Joshua had crossed over the Jordan, that about 500 yards from where he was sitting, Israel camped, made their camp, and one day, that great mighty warrior Joshua, who took Moses' place to lead the children into the promised land, and when he was out one day walking around, looking at the walls of Jericho, which was his first objective, to take that city, they was all in, the doors closed and the big rocks hanging on top to throw off at them when he came up. And he was wondering just how that he'd be able to take that city because it was given to them and just what would be the way that God had planned to do it. And he happened to look, standing before him, there stood a mighty warrior with his sword drawn and Joshua drew his sword and went out to meet him. He said, are you for us or you against our, uh, for our enemies? And the sword glistened over his head. He said, nay, I'm the captain of the host of the Lord. The mighty Joshua threw his sword on the ground, took off his shield, laid it down his helmet, and fell to his feet in front of him. And then blind Bartimaeus thought, you know what? That happened just right out here. That great captain of the Lord's host was standing on the ground right out there. But the days of the miracles is past. Little did he know that less than a hundred yards from him, stood that same captain of the host of the Lord, making his way out. It's when we think of God, when we begin to dream dreams of being well, when we dream dreams of being saved, when we get to thinking about our sins and how cruel it is before God, and that's when he draws near. That's when these disciples, brokenhearted, going on the road to Emmaus, that Jesus stepped out of the bush and began to talk to them. While they were thinking of him, you see, the trouble today, we got so much money and stuff on our mind, God can't have a place to get in our thinking. We want to go downtown, shop for new dresses or new hats or something or another, and if we go to see Susie and John, we're going to play cards tonight. We can't go to church tonight because we love Susie on or something like that. The television programs we got everything else on our mind the churches has got so many orders and things to keep us so busy prayer meetings is left out we need to draw nigh unto god so he will draw nigh unto us friend that's right but everything else he has took the place of the prayer meeting everything else has took the place of the real spiritual worship or oh, maybe two or three minutes in church but i just love to lay and bathe before him in his don't you love that oh just lift up your hands and drink from the fountain until 
you just can't drink no more, just bubbling over in his sweetness and his goodness. I was talking to a noted evangelist, my brother T.L. Bosborn. He said, I was thinking, Brother Branham, of how that my whole objective is to save souls and give all of my time to save souls to Christ. Said, then I happen to think, what about my own love and devotion to Christ? Christ loves him too. He loves us. He put a lot of time in things, but God wants us to come apart and just sit down and worship him and talk with him, talk it over. I love that. Oh, that sweetness. That's the greatest time of anybody's life is just to sit down and meditate. Take everything off your mind. If you would do that, there wouldn't be so much nervousness around the country. If we would just think on God, draw nigh unto me and I'll draw nigh unto you. While our blind beggar sits there on that cold morning shivering and the warm sun trying to bathe his back and he thought of that great mighty warrior that stood right outside the gate from where he was sitting and talked to Joshua and gave him all the instructions how the walls would fall at the sounding of the trumpet and so forth. He was thinking about that great God can't die. He is forever alive. Just about that time, he heard a noise. That same great chief captain was on his road out the gate coming through Jerusalem. And you know, there's something about it. Where Jesus is, there's usually not a lot of noise. I don't know why, but makes a lot of noise. You know, the high priest, when he went into the holiest of holies, he had he was anointed with a perfume and with his anointing oil. And on he, the hem of his garment, they had a palm, granite, and a bell. And every time he walked, that played holy, holy, holy unto the Lord. And the only way that they knew he was alive, when he was back in the holiest of holies, because there was a noise. I wonder if there isn't some deadness somewhere. All right, that's the only way they knew he was alive, because he was making a noise back in there. They were listening to see if there was still life in there when he went into the holiest of holies. And when Jesus came forth out of the gate, there came a great multitude rushing and perhaps ran over the poor old beggar. And he was blind and he said, what's going on? What's the matter? Nobody's paying any attention to him. And he heard the somebody saying, Hosanna, Hosanna to him that cometh in the name of the Lord, Hosanna. Women were screaming, men were screaming. Then he could hear others mocking and making fun. Then he heard the head of the association of Jerusalem, that priest, scream out and said, Say, you fake prophet, they tell me you raised a dead man. You've got a whole graveyard full of them up here. Come up and raise these and let us see you do it. But you see, Jesus never did mind devils. He just let them go on. He had, he minded the father, what he did, what the father showed him to do. He didn't turn any stones to bread. They put a rug around his face one time and hit him on the head, said, Now, if you're a prophet, tell us who hit you. We'll believe you if put a rug and he never opened his mouth and said a word. Hanging on the cross, they said, tear your hands loose. Come down on the cross if you be Christ. He would have done it. Sure he would. He could, he could have done it, but if he'd done it, he'd been minding the devil. That's right. So as Billy Sunday said one time, said, every tree had 50 angels sitting in it, said, just tear your hand loose and point towards us and we'll change this scene here in a few minutes. Kayafa said, he saved others himself. He can't save, not knowing he was giving him the greatest compliment he ever had. If he saved himself, he couldn't save others. So he gave himself that could save others. I'm glad that he was able to resist the temptation of the devil. Jesus, when you hear people say, let me see him heal this one. Let me see him heal that one. Just know that's the devil. That's the same voice seeing. There's a little old man down here on the corner. He's got sells pencils. I know he's a good old fellow. Come down and heal him. Let me see your divine healers do that. Just remember, that's the voice of the devil. That's right. Just remember, that's what 
the scripture says. And there's a lot of them that's just a lot like that. But of course, the devils don't die. The devil takes his man, but never his spirit. God takes his man, but never his spirit. The battle goes on just the same. And then this crowd rushed out, and they screamed at him. And this, that, then finally he said, what's going on? What is wrong? What is wrong here? What's all this rush about? What's all the noise? No one was paying any attention to him. And I believe, let's think, it was a little believer on the Lord Jesus, maybe a little lady stepped down, the poor old fellow, and you know people that follow Jesus have sympathy for people like that. Followers of Christ stepped down, picked the old fellow up, and said, Sir, have they pushed you off of the rock here? Yes, miss. What's going on? Oh, you don't understand? No. Well, did you ever hear of Jesus of Nazareth? I don't believe I ever did, said Bartimaeus. Well, Jesus of Nazareth is that great prophet that Moses said would be raised up among us of our own people. He's passing by. Oh, if you could have seen him, I'm sure he would have restored your sight. Oh, where is he at? Where is he at? Um, oh, he's about a hundred yards or so down the road. He raised up, Oh Jesus, the son of David, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Some of them said, Oh, shut up. You make so much noise. You give me a headache. The rest of them around here, hollering also, shut up. Oh Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. I don't believe he could have heard his voice. There's too much screaming and going on. But he knew that if he was that prophet of God, he could be touched. I believe maybe he slipped down and said, Oh Lord, God, please stop him. Please, Lord, be merciful to me. While mercy is passing by and Jesus stopped, looked back, I believe it. The woman touched his garment. He felt a virtue go from him. That's the same Jesus. Just a few days later, his, not his screaming stopped him, but his face stopped him. And the Bible said, Jesus stood still. Oh, brother, when a faith of a blind beggar can stop him still in his tracks, a man that was sitting outside the gate, excommunicated from what we say society, and he was a beggar and a poor and a ragged and blind and miserable, but his face stopped the Son of God. What was on the Son of God? He was on his way to Jerusalem to be crucified for the sins of the world. The whole weight of every sin that was ever committed in the world laid upon his precious shoulders. His head was in the air of a ripened fruit and vegetables was being thrown at him away with such a man others hollering hosanna hosanna the other one hollered come raise the dead show us something you can do such a confusion as that but he kept his face towards jerusalem he knew he was going there to die for the people that was crying for his blood could you imagine what that was his own children crying for the father's blood. That's exactly right. And then, with all that upon his shoulders, with all that facing him, and he knew he come to do that, yet the cry and the prayer and the faith of the, that one old blind beggar stopped him, still in his tracks. And he turned around and he said, Your faith has saved you. Oh my, thy faith has saved thee. I can hear some of them say, be of a good cheer, be of a good cheer. He goes on down the road. He stands, he said, what did he say to me? What did he say now? Thy faith has saved thee. Standing, looking, and after a while, he began to see his fingers. Something was happening. His faith was being confirmed. Your faith can stop him tonight. In the great rush, the coming of the Lord Jesus, and all that there is, there is not a person in here too poor or too rugged or too insignificant you are not too low in morals or of life but what you can stop him right here where he's at now and he will stand and call you some time ago i was taking a little lesson on Bartimaeus that said that he'd been blind for many years he had a wife and a little girl and one night his wife was got real sick and uh, he went out and prayed he said lord Heal my wife, and if you'll heal my wife, my wife get well, 
he had uh, to do something to make a little enchantments for the public or you would never be able to stop them like in india and brother osborne if you're here tonight you understand what i mean they got a little monkey or something another that they have to do or a cobra snake or some kind of a something enchantment to stop tourists to get money when they pass by and they said but a mayor had two little turtle doves and they done little tumbles over each other and that would attract the attention of them pass by the tourists and the people coming in out of the city he said lord i love my wife if you let her get well tomorrow i'll give you them to turtle doves for sacrifice well his wife got well and he took the turtle doves for sacrifice then later on his little girl that he'd never seen in his life she'd been born blind since he was blind about 12 years old said she had real pretty golden hair it's a little story of course and say that she got sick one night and the doctor had been there and said but Emmaus, she's got a fever she'll just can't live with this kind of a fever and after the doctor left he felt his way outside of the house when the wind was blowing around by the rose bush and he looked up to where he thought god would be and he said father i don't have nothing i have nothing left one thing left and that's my lamb and today you seen i forgot what they call it when a dog leads a blind man and a blind man leads the blind the blind dog leads the blind or the blind dog leads the blind man in them days they had a lamb that led the blind in instead of a dog they trained the lamb but Emmaus had a lamb and led him over to his place where he begged and he said lord if you will just let my little girl get well i'll take my lamb and I'll sacrifice it for you and the little girl got well and the next day he was on his road to take the lamb up to the church to the sacrifice spot and the priest was standing up at one upon the banisters of the building he said where goest thou blind Bartimaeus?" he said i go to the temple to sacrifice his lamb unto the lord oh he said blind Bartimaeus, you cannot sacrifice that lamb here i'll give you the price of a lamb but you can buy it out at the stores and sacrifice it he said i promised i never promised god a lamb i promised god this lamb he said blind Bartimaeus, but you can't do that that lamb is your eyes he said if i'll keep my word to god god will provide a lamb for blind Bartimaeus eyes this cold november day that's what god has done god provided a lamb for blind Bartimaeus eyes may i say this tonight my dear brother sister that same lamb is provided for you and for me god has provided a lamb of our eyes of understanding for this lamb was provided for our healing he was provided so that his spirit could live among us through this day to bring christ in reality to us god's lamb is provided thou son of david have mercy on me let us pray gracious god full of mercy and truth thou the stream of all my comfort said blind funny crosby more than life to me whom have i on earth beside thee or whom in the heaven but thee and she screamed out again pass me not O gentle savior hear my humble cry while on others thou art calling do not pass me by dear jesus that is a humble plea tonight do not pass by this auditorium here in tulsa tonight without stopping lord and visiting us we love you with all of our hearts we praise thee with all that is within us and we believe that you are the same great chief captain the captain of our salvation and we are looking for you to come in glory someday bringing with you the host of the angels and to receive your precious church that's been called out of the world and washed in your blood bearing in their body your name i pray heavenly father that you will grant tonight that if there be one in here or many i do not know their hearts thou doest if they do not know you as their precious savior and feel that warmth of fellowship god let it come to pass at this very hour that they will receive thee and love thee and you will draw nigh unto them may they think on thee now and be drawn nigh grant it lord may there not be a sinner boy girl man or a woman walk out of here tonight may there not be a backslider walk out tonight but what has come to god and had their sins forgiven may they cry in their heart thou son of david have mercy on me have mercy on me god grant it lord 
and while we have our heads bowed and eyes closed i wonder in this visible audience tonight i want you to be real honest and everybody free free especially for those who doesn't know christ now is there any here while you're praying we'll just lick, like to lift your hand here on the bottom floor lift up your hand not to me but to him and say thou son of david i've trespassed against thee i've broken the commandments be merciful to me at this hour would you raise your hand so that i can see you just and pray for you god bless you god bless you all all down along the floor here over to my right god bless you raise your hand say pray for me brother burnham god bless you that's good god bless you i've trespassed against the laws oh lord i want you to be merciful to me god bless this man laying here in his court laying here god grant you tonight that you will you can go home and be well sir up in the balconies to my right would you raise your hands god bless you lady god bless you that's good someone else raise your hand up just slip up your hand while everything every eye closed and everyone praying let it just be the holy spirit and i if you will the balconies to the center here would there be any up there would raise your hand say pray god bless you sir god bless you that's good the balcony to my left raise your hand god bless you lady god bless you young fellow that's a great stand for teenager god that's the greatest thing you ever done son you might have done a many a great thing but that's the greatest pass me not a gentle savior here my humble your, i want your masses now now ere my death i want you to receive me into your kingdom i don't know when that will be maybe before the service is closed tonight maybe before i get home one of these nights somewhere some place some time of day or night you're going to feel the pulse coming up your sleeve it's all then oh my don't let it happen until you know the lord jesus as your own dear personal savior if there be another now before we pray anywhere boy girl man or woman god bless you our heavenly father be merciful now they raise their hands crying thou son of david be merciful to me and they and may they this very hour receive jesus as their personal savior may he come in the great power in their life this young man up here lord that raised his hand something's dealt deeply with my heart on that boy i pray father maybe you're calling a minister to the service oh i pray that you'll bless him and all those others that raise their hands young and old may they receive jesus just now as savior and then go out of here and be baptized in some good church in christian faith receive the holy spirit and go out in the service of god to do whatever they can do to help bring jesus to this dying nation and dying world granted father pass by us tonight father and visit us we pray in jesus name amen let's just sing one verse of that before we go any further. Pass me not a gentle savior. Pass me not a gentle savior. Hear my humble cry. One on another, thou art calling. Do not pass me by. Savior, savior. Hear my humble cry. One on another, thou art calling. Do not pass me by. Sweetly now, let's all believers raise our hands while we sing it real quietly. Savior, a spirit of worship now. The message is over. Let's worship the Lord. Hear my humble cry. While another is out calling, do not pass me by. Let's just have it. Your eyes closed, just praying. Oh, don't you love him? Tell me something greater than love. God is love. No one will ever be able to express how God is such love. He is a gap of love, the greatest love of all. Now, I was just going to preach and make an altar call tonight. And then I got here. I was all turned around. I met Billy. I said, you give out any prayer cards. I said, nope, never give out any prayer cards. But we don't need any prayer cards for healing service. Are you wanting, you think tonight, you love him, you believe he's the same Lord Jesus, you believe that your faith will reach up and say, the son of David, have mercy on me. I am needy. I need thee. Oh, I need thee every hour. I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to thee. You believe you could touch him because him... To turn around and say thy faith has saved you you believe you could do that out there without prayer cards you believe you have faith enough to do it you do raise up your hands say 
I believe I have faith. Oh, that's the way I like to see you put your hand up. I believe, all right, I know what none of you, the Holy Spirit knows you all, but he's here, his presence is here, and he was here today. He would do just like he did then. If you had faith to touch him, he'd turn around. That's always what he did. Was that right? Faith is what come, touched him. The woman touched his garment, and he turned around, said, Who touched me? He looked around till he found the little woman. He said, Your blood tissue stopped because your father has saved you. See, your faith did it. And Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Is that right? If blind Bartimaeus' faith could stop him, if Philip standing there looking at him could go get Nathaniel, Nathaniel could be brought before him and he told him where he was at before he left. When Andrew went and got his brother Simon, Peter, or Simon it was then, and brought him to Jesus, and Jesus looked over at him, said, Your name is Simon, your father's name was John Jonas. That's the same Jesus tonight, see? Now as far as healing or saving you, that's already done. You understand that, don't you? He was wounded for transgressions, he was bruised for iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we were past tense. Now, you in the courts laying here of them, blank spot on the tip tonight, you in the courts, you out there with whatever disease, whatever you have a need for prayer, someone else, no matter what it is, God knows you and your faith. Now, he will do that. If he will do that, how many of you in the building will say, Lord, I love you. I believe that you're here. I appreciate you. I'm going to even renew my covenant with you. Would you do that? Say, I renew myself to you. Now, precious friends, I'm your brother. This is the word of God. The Bible says, if we've been preaching any newcomers here, we have been preaching this week and seeing the Holy Spirit. Do that. The Holy Spirit promised through Jesus Christ that in the last days, he would do that same thing before the church, just before his coming. How many has been here this week and had it taught on Jesus' seed was the days of Sodom, seeing, and the angel even had his back turned to the woman when he asked Abraham, where is your wife Sarah? And he said, in the tent behind you. And she laughed within herself. He said, why did she laugh? Jesus said, that same thing will take place just before the coming of the Lord. It's the last sign. You have been had healing. Watch when Jesus declared himself, first thing he did he was baptized with the Holy Ghost. When John baptized him, then we notice the next thing. He started out in his ministry. He started healing the sick and his fame went everywhere. Is that right? Then when that taken place, the next thing he began to show them the sign of the Messiah. And that's when he was rejected. That's when they crucified him and taken him up. Now, that's just exactly. We have come to the Holy Ghost baptism, the divine healing services. Now, you have come into the great sign of his appearing among us how happy we should be when we don't know what time the world will go into ashes do you know it could be possible before we leave this building that this earth could be blown up scientific says it's midnight right now time for it to happen all scientists and everything is shaking everywhere and remember the church goes home before that takes place then how close is the coming of the Lord. Be ready. Be prepared. For we don't know what minute or hour he may appear. He might be at any time. We are receiving our last sign to the church of his coming. I want to pray for these handkerchiefs in just a moment. Well, bow our heads. Precious Father, these handkerchiefs may be goes to some poor, precious mother child, father, someone that's suffering. We're taught in the Bible that they taken from the body of St. Paul, handkerchiefs or aprons, unclean spirits, went out of the people. Diseases are cured. Father, we know that we, we are not St. Paul, but we know that you are still Jesus. It wasn't Paul, and it was said one time that when the Red Sea had the children of Israel cut off from the promised land, that God looked down through that pillar of fire with angry eyes, and the sea got scared and to world up, and Israel 
crossed over to the promised land on dry ground. Now, Father, when these handkerchiefs and little parcels is laid upon the sick, don't look as much as through the pillar of fire, but look through the blood of your own Son, who gave the promise, and may, whenever these parcels is laid on the sick, may the devil get scared. May you look upon him, Lord, and he will know that this is sent from a meeting where people that are filled with your spirit are praying sincerely, and may he depart from them, and they pass to that good and healthy place where the scripture says, I would above all things that you prosper in health. We sent them in Jesus' name for that purpose. Amen. Now be reverent. How many is sick out there? Raise up your hands. Ever where you are, just raise your hand everywhere in the building. Now be reverent. Now, what a time, breathless. Some things got to happen. Some things got to happen or the Bible found wrong and me a false pretender or it's going to be found true and our faith confirmed. Don't worry. Christ is here. He's always, he promised that he cannot do nothing but keep his promise. If you believe with all your heart now, just have faith. Don't doubt. Do you see that? A light hanging right over this man here got trouble with his eyes. That's right. You are praying. Your son sits next to you. You believe God can tell me What's wrong with your son? You believe it? It's a nervous condition. That's right. Isn't it, son? Uh -huh. Do you believe God can tell me who you are? Will it make you feel better, Mrs. Cullum? That's right. See? That light, now you receive what you ask for. Same one here. Right here, a man sitting, looking right at me. He's suffering with arthritis. He has had a heart attack. He's a minister. He isn't from this city. He's not even from this state. He's from Kansas. You believe that God can heal you, sir? You go back to Coffeeville and feel real good about it. Would you? Your name is Reverend Midland. Go back and be healed, sir. I do not know you. If that's right, wave your hands like this. I'm a stranger to you. Your faith has saved you, sir. That was not me, my precious friend. That was the Lord Jesus Christ. He's out there among you. I'm just his mouthpiece, seeing with my eyes, what he's doing, I wish you could see what I'm looking at now, see, it's his goodness, a man sitting right out here on the end, kind of a t-shirt on, or sleeves, short sleeves, he's praying for somebody else though, he's praying for a man that's sitting right here, looks like a Mexican man, you've got stomach trouble, haven't you sir, they haven't told you how, you believe God can tell me who you are, they call you Joe, they didn't tell you how bad you were, sir. But go believing now. You can be well. Have faith in God. Back in this section, if thou canst believe, here's a woman sitting right down here, setting second one in, and her had her head down. She's praying. Oh, Lord God, let him call me. She ain't praying for herself. She's praying for her husband. Her husband had a nervous collapse. He's been attending the meetings, but he just couldn't come back. He's bed first and she's weeping over her handkerchief now in her eyes for her poor husband lays just as a point of death with a nervous collapse fear not sister take that handkerchief you're crying in and lay it upon him don't doubt he will come out of it if thou can't believe here's a little woman sitting right out from her that just struck faith with that little woman she's praying also her trouble She's got with her head and with her eyes, and she's got a stomach trouble. It's the little woman. Wait a minute. Her name is Annie. Annie, stand up to your feet. Jesus Christ makes you well. Do you love the Lord Jesus? Are you ready to receive his blessings? Do you believe me to be a servant? I've told you the truth. Now I'll tell you this. Will you lay your hands on one another across there? Ministers, brothers, some of you faithful preachers there, come down here and lay your hands along these people here. I want especially on this woman here, you lay your hands on one another in the balconies, wherever you are. Now, is Jesus that man there with that prostrate trouble? Forget it, sir. Jesus Christ makes you well. Go home. You have been having pains in your lungs, sitting right back there next to that post. Don't have no fear. It's left you tubercular. You can go home and be made well. Christ Jesus makes you well. There it is. It's just all over the building, everywhere. Everywhere. Oh. 
pass me not for gentle savior hear my humble cry while on others are calling do not pass pray now put your hands on one another and pray savior savior here don't be carnal pray pray get your mind on god don't look at the next fellow get your mind on god everywhere while on others are the son of David, have mercy on me. Do not pass me by. Oh, Savior, Savior. Raise up your hands now to God. Say, thank you, Lord Jesus. Heavenly Father, we now challenge the devil and rebuke him in the name of Jesus Christ till every power of sickness, every darkness, leave the place. And may they be healed just now. Through Jesus' name, give him praise, all you people. He will not pass you by. 